We're rolling. Oh, we're rolling. Camera girl said it. Don't know if it was caught on the video, but uh, I'm just cleaning my glasses because they're all kind of fogged out. Yeah, a little busted up. Got some silver tape holding them together. The epoxy glue didn't work. <laughs> I put silver on the other side just to make them kind of even. <laughs> maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll silver tape the whole frames just make them silver. Do a Elton John thing or something. <laughs> Sharp customs. We are rolling. Thought I would throw out. Uh, kind of a little update that's kind of what we do you know don't show you working on too many things as much as I would like to but uh, I find a lot of that stuff a little bit boring I'd rather do the work you've seen me do lots of fiberglassing as you can see my my fiberglass table is kind of covered and you know fiberglass stuff obviously uh, you all know, been doing the the engine blocks, they're fiberglass, two piece, put the wooden wooden pieces in them, laminate them together. Just did that one the other day. Uh, did this one a few days ago. I stuck the pipes on it, obviously. You know, it looks cool. Uh, started another one today. I did a top. It's the top. They're just clear cast. You know, they're going to be bondoed and primered and whatnot. Got my wooden blocks in this lower piece that's still in the mold. And basically, what I do is I set the topper on. And yeah, there's some gaps. Got to kind of line it up. And there's some gaps. I just basically tape it in place. And then, yeah, basically, if you want to know how to get these things together... Uh, it's pretty crazy, actually, because I have to work through this little, this little square hole <laughs> and laminate fiberglass, you know, all the way around the four, the four seams to hold it together, and then uh, take the lower molds off. Uh, it's a bit of a, you know, it's it's a, it's tricky. Let's just put it that way. It's a little tricky. But hey, they're cool. Did another uh, did another one of these today. The uh, 1934 grill shrouds. This one's got it's got some air bubbles. You know, you're gonna have to put some filler. This one, this one, I kind of did this one just quick. I had the you know the the two piece mold for it. And I was like, ah, you know, I'm doing I'm doing a block, and I'm. I was doing this piece here, so this is like my hot rod flat, more flat uh, firewall uh, for the 34 coupes, and I got two versions of the firewalls, and we'll, we'll check that out in a second, but I thought while I was doing this and doing the topper, uh, I figured I would just, uh, why not just do another grill shroud. You know, they're they're pretty easy. Once they're all once they're all filled and primered up, they look good. And I thought, you know, I just keep pumping these pieces out. Uh, don't know if I'm gonna sell any of these 34s this year. Not really too sure. Uh, that's like the little firewall insert. I figure, you know, these things get trimmed they get trimmed back, you know, quite a bit. Like all this side goes away. Uh, this top piece gets trimmed off. Um, the radius here gets trimmed off. But I uh, figured I would make a mold. Uh, because you, you saw in other videos, I actually did the firewall uh, in the one that is going to be shipped across the pond. More hot rod style. A lot cleaner. A lot flatter. And I was like, hmm, I should produce a mold off of that one. You know, so I can uh, put these firewalls in that uh, 
you know, at will. Fire at will. Whoever, whoever the hell will is. But anyhow, <laughs> there, there you go. Just some of the stuff that I've been working on uh, this week. Obviously, I've been working on vehicles, you know. Been working on the, uh, you know, the uh, shoebox Ford behind Camera Girl. I'm not really going to talk too much about that. It's, uh, you know, we're just uh, got the motor in. We're mocking stuff up so we can start doing sheet metal work and whatnot. Made sure that we could fit stuff. I did make a, uh, we're using these old manifolds. And I had to basically get the pipe around the new power steering box. You know, get it around the oil filter, you know, so I could dart it back underneath the car. The other side, not really a problem. Had to lower the front motor mounts, put a different piece of rubber under here, lowered it about a half an inch so that I could get a an HEI to actually drop in, you know, without cutting more, you know, cutting more of this out. It all works now. We'll clean it up. We'll get some new sheet metal in there and it'll look freaking awesome. But, uh, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll talk more about that 40, 49 shoe box when we get going on it more. Uh, I have been picking, I've been picking at it, I pick at it almost every day. You know, even if I don't actually do manual work, I was actually sitting inside it today looking at the floor and the firewall and kind of thinking about how I was going to start to uh, sheet in the firewall. But, uh, some new stuff, some new stuff. We got these, we got these, look at these, look at these, look at these. These are the, what I've been waiting for, uh, for about a week. The big fatties. They're row funds, 200, 120 HTs. I don't know why they printed outside on there. It's beyond me. But they're, uh, there's a primal. There's a primal. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll put them side by side. They're a little bit taller. You can see they're a little, they're a little wider. You know, I don't know how much wider. I don't know. Maybe half an inch or so. But they're, uh, they're pretty cool. Pretty, I got one on the car. Uh, obviously I've got to, I've got to make the new extension, insert, axle adapter, whatever you call it, you know, 24 millimeter in the back side of the rim. Got to drill it, tap it for a bolt, and then I'll bore the, uh, the inside section out to 12 millimeter to fit the axle. Because this tire could go could uh, go in a wee bit more. Obviously you see I got two here and I got two still wrapped up in the bag. Figured if I was gonna get a set might as well order two sets. Set for myself. Set for this project. Like why would you not do that? I mean these are just freaking awesome wheels. Uh, not sure what the, they're a little soft. But uh, on the car, they seem fine. It's definitely going to be interesting to take this car, <laughs> when it's finished, for another test run, you know, before it gets shipped. Don't know when that's going to be. But uh, then I was playing around because I've got this six, you know, kind of like a six spoke uh, thing going on on the rim. And I was trying to figure out because I had the I had a Reiko alloy with the four holes on the fronts before, uh, and they sit in they sit in quite tight. And what I did is I grabbed one of these ones off of my uh, my Chevy truck upstairs. They're a five spoke, and uh, I don't know they don't they. I couldn't get matching fronts to match the back. All the company sells 
by the way, the company that I got these wheels from, if anybody wants to know, is TIT Racing. Yeah, I know, Tit Racing. But that's what it's called. It's a, you know, it's a across, way across the pond uh, company. You know, place starts with a C. You know what I'm talking about. Um, they're not too badly priced. Uh, I think they're 119 USD uh, for a set, uh, which I thought wasn't too bad. Uh, I was actually impressed. I, I mean, I like I like the primals. The primals are uh, they're pretty good, tough, durable wheel. I like the fact that on the hex they put this aluminum insert. Uh, into the plastic. I like that. I like that they do that. And when I got these ones, I looked at the back side and I was like, mm, I don't know what that is in there. So I actually took a knife and I scraped this. And it is an aluminum insert. Uh, I was hoping it was an aluminum insert, not plastic. But yeah, those, I don't care, those wheels are, they're pretty bitching. And, uh, you know, Thanks to the guys, I don't know his name, I'd love to throw his name out there. Um, saw it on one of the quarter scale groups uh, that I belong to. He had a set of these on a, I believe it is a Pro Street uh, Nova. It's an electric car that he's actually building. And I saw these on it and saw the name and the size and kind of looked it up and you know kind of kind of found a few different avenues to find these tires I uh, believe uh, I think it's AliExpress or Alibaba you know one of them other places <laughs> across the pond you can get them through them uh, I wasn't too yeah I just went with TIT racing uh, they are Pretty sure they're uh, a company that also supplies the uh, FID products, uh, which is a pretty uh, pretty expensive brand of car. And uh, yeah, so I ordered through them about a week. Not bad, not bad. I was surprised. I was just glad that I <laughs> that that they showed up on my front porch today because I kept looking at the tracking and looking at the tracking and it was, wasn't was really showing anything. It was like, ah, there's no updates. And it was like, you know, it wasn't until yesterday. It was like, they were supposed to be here yesterday. That's what uh, Canada, my, my delivery service here, Canada Post, was saying that, yeah, they'd be here, you know, by the end of the day yesterday. And it was like, uh, they showed up this afternoon. But still, but, cool, I don't care, they showed up. <laughs> that was really all I cared, is that they actually showed up and I didn't get ripped off from my, uh, you know, you know for, for the coin. But, uh, I'm going to pull, I'm just going to move these out of the way. And this body, this body, before I jump over there, this body is pretty much ready. Uh, obviously, this is the one with the more stock looking firewall that's what I was talking about this is more of a stock looking firewall and yeah this thing these things were all dusty because because <laughs> I've been grinding metal and stuff on this this thing sitting right next door but this thing's pretty much ready I'm gonna uh, recreate uh, some new molds uh, for this just because I want to and why not? I can, you know. Uh, I don't like <laughs> the original molds that I made these two coop bodies from. They're 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 great. They're cool. They'll get you, you know. They'll get you there. They'll they'll get you these, you know, with some manipulation. But I plan on making some molds uh, because if you wanted the doors to be functional, you wouldn't be able to do that. Let's just say that. Uh, they're too... They just don't fit right. That's all. I'm, that's really all I can say. They just don't fit right. 
they don't fit right. But recreating a couple of new molds, if you wanted to, you know, cut the doors out, make them functional, you could actually do that because they won't be sprung. You know, these ones, these ones are kind of sprung. I mean, there was some manipulation that went on to make these rear corners of the door kind of fit. Uh, to fit properly. But, uh, yeah, so, glad I got these. Uh, the, the fronts are, you know, they're a little bit skinny and I got some manipulation. Manipulation. Isn't that a, isn't that a word? Yeah, because these, basically a 5 16 bolt fits through these wheels. <laughs> Believe it or not, these are, these wheels are for an electric scooter. Found them on Amazon. Uh, this is like a 9 16 fine thread that goes in there. So I got some manipulation to do. I got to do something funky to get a, something to thread in there. Um, you know, that roughly a 9 16 bolt. I'll figure something out. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. So I'm going to pull this. I'm going to pull this. Uh, this front grill off. You've seen the the chromed out bumperettes, you know, that I chrome plated. But as you can see, uh, every one of these pulleys, the lower pulley, the water pump pulley, the blower pulley, the tensioner pulley, and even this little itty bitty makeshift looking alternator. Yeah, I did a lot of that stuff last week. Uh, very time consuming, you know, on the lathe, turning all them little pulleys, making everything fit right, making everything look good. You know, some of them are one piece, some of them are two piece, like this one in the in the blower. Basically, this pulley's, you know, it's bolted to the the snout. Uh, it it's it's tapped it's threaded it can be bolted to the blower um, yeah I wasn't sure with the wheels like I say these front wheels they're a wee bit taller uh, than what I, ha I had one of these on on there and as you can see it's a little bit taller but what I like about them is if the way I have I, ha I do have a plan I have a game plan on how to get these mounted and they will stick out roughly three quarters of an inch uh, further these are these ones are pretty tight they're right on the spindle these ones will stick out uh, probably right about where it's sitting which gives it you know gives the front just that little bit wider wider look now I have some changes I'm making in the back uh, with the rear, uh, basically the uh, the bars that are holding in the rear end, uh, I got to step them in just a little bit to accommodate pushing this, basically pushing the wheel in. So I'm going to recreate the uh, the shock mounts, and we're going to give this car just a little wee bit more stance. Um, I did make a new, believe it or not, I made, so my leaf springs, they were just sheet metal, uh, like 18 gauge, and I thought I could actually heat them and quench them and turn them into like spring steel. Didn't work, didn't work there, but I wish I could show you one of the ones I took out because I actually folded it in half and I... I threw it in the trash because I replaced it. So get this, what I took, what I took, I'm gonna pop, I'm gonna pop, these shocks just pop off of the, uh, maybe not, I don't have strong enough, uh, oh, I, don't have, I don't have strong enough thumbnails, but uh, I actually have a piece of spring steel in between the other two, uh, I've, I, I do have, I do have shackles. 
I'm gonna undo this. Look at this. It's a lock nut. Obviously, it's a very used lock nut because I got it off. It's a little shock. So there you can see. Uh, basically, what I did is I put a piece of threaded rod into my trailing arm. I made a little shackle off of the leaf spring that fits right on there. And we actually have... Uh, I'm going to undo this one too, see if I can get it. Oh, look at that, man. Not very good lock nuts considering I can get them. <laughs> I can turn them off. I can just turn them off with my, uh, with my hands. We've actually got, it actually raised the front end a wee bit and we've got much better suspension. It actually, it's not bending the spring, the spring, the spring before was bent kind of all, you know, tappy wannis or whatever you call that. <laughs> but no, and basically, so the my middle leaf spring, believe it or not, what I use is I used a hunk of uh, sawzall blade. It is kind of like spring steel, and you know, I just I cut it with a zip cut. Uh, I did heat it with the torch to kind of bend it. Uh, obviously, before I even did that, first thing I did was to see if I could even drill a hole through it because it is a, you know, it's a different type of metal. And I got the hole through it, got it cut to size, and it uh, it works freaking awesome. I've got. Uh, I've got a shackle system now on the leaf spring. I actually had the leaf spring just kind of zip tied, you know, to the straight axle, and I thought that was kind of cheesy. So I got the straight axle on there. I've got my straight axle kind of tipped back at a nice degree. Uh, the shocks where you just saw me take them from, uh, that is not uh, where they're going. These shocks, they, they don't really do much. They're, uh, they're more there for show, let's just say that, you know. They don't have, uh, you can see them moving. They don't have a whole, <laughs> they don't have a whole lot of dampening. Um, but, you know, we, hey, I've already test drove the car. So, basically, I think what's going to happen with the shocks is, I think, I'm going to drill and tap a hole over here because what's happening when they're on here is, number one, they're almost, well, you can see they're, they're almost bottomed out. I have nothing there. So, yeah. I think if I move them, move them over here like that, at least it gives me, you know, gives me a quarter inch of kind of movement, which is, which will be, uh, it'll be perfect. It'll be perfect. So there you, there you go. A little more on the, uh, you know, fiberglass stuff. Been making those little, Little quarter scale uh, motors. Hopefully, I can get my uh, my good friend Jeff. Hopefully, I can get him to make me some more of these uh, these cool pipes. Uh, if not, I guess I'm gonna have to attempt it myself. Which uh, hey, I'm always up for a challenge, you know. But uh, yeah, bitching bitching looking tires. Maybe the next time that we do a little bit of an update on this, we might actually... Oh, there's an... I almost forgot. There's another thing. As you can see, all the windows... All the windows are turned out. Two sides, the back, the front. They're all trimmed out. Uh, basically, they're trimmed out because I'm getting this thing ready for color. And... Uh, could be the next video, probably not, um, but very soon, yeah, we are going to get this thing uh, into color. There you go, man. Sharp Customs, you know the routine. I'm not going to say it. Thank you to all my new subscribers. They come and they go. Thank you to all my regular subscribers. As always, I love you all. Sharp Customs. Peace. I'm out.